something to submit today, right? Okay, leave the homework here when you leave the class. Okay. Park Byung-ho, Lee Dong-jun, Kim Min-su, Jo Ki-hun, Kim Duk-jung, Kang Dok-gu, Yoo-jun, Shubang, Alkan, Kim Jong-in, Chae Won-seok, Kim Sang-hun, Song Hyun-jae, Han, Duong, Damang, Hirun Rab, Kim Ki-hyun, Go Won-seok, Okay, let's start today's class. In previous class, we have learned about the concept of entropy. So, can you tell me what is the entropy? Sorry? Yeah, number of configuration in the meaning of uh, uh, statistic, statistical thermodynamics. And what is the other meaning in classical? Sorry? Yeah, it, it indicates irreversibility. For example, when some reaction occurs in irreversible way, the entropy, total entropy, which means the entropy of the system plus entropy of the surrounding, entropy change of surrounding will be positive. So, in previous class, I told you that when reaction occurs reversibly, then the heat leaves from the surrounding is equivalent with the heat appeared in the system, right? But when the process occurs irreversibly, the heat leaves the surrounding is not equivalent. The heat appeared in the system, right? Heat appeared in the system is the same, independent of irreversibility of the process. So then what make this difference? For example, reversible system, the heat leave surrounding is and the entropy change in the system and the summation of the entropy is zero in reversible process. How about the irreversible? Which is less than the Q reversible. But the heat appeared in the system given by this one. So, where comes the heat? Where comes, where does the heat comes? Even though the heat leaves the surrounding is less than the Q reversible. 
I told you the difference comes from the degradation of the capability of work of the system. The, the capability of the system to work degraded into heat and actually the heat appeared in the system is Q minus <coughs> Q. Plus. Plus Q reversible minus Q. And this is a heat absorbed from the surrounding. And this is heat appeared by degradation of workability. Right? That's what I told you in last class. So in summary, the entropy change during re reversible process. It is the heat absorbed by the system divided by the temperature in by this one. And the same thing applied to the entropy change in the system when the reaction occurs irreversibly. In other words, the entropy change of the system does not depend on the irreversible, irreversibility of the process. Because this amount of heat comes from the degradation of the ability to work. OK? So when you want to calculate to evaluate the entropy change of the system it, uh, in system which goes in the irreversible way is to calculate the entropy change of the system in the reversible reaction which has the same initial and final condition. So let's move, let's go back to the free expansion problem. Here is our box, and when I remove the wall, the gas is freely expand to hole of the container. So I want to calculate the entropy change related with reaction. This reaction is irreversible reaction. What is corresponding reversible reaction? As I mentioned, we can calculate the entropy change of the irreversible reaction by considering the reversible reaction which has the same initial and final state. So what will be the corresponding reversible reaction? It will be, here is our free expansion, and its corresponding reversible reaction will be isothermal reversible expansion, which means at first we put the P pressure, ex external pressure here, and infinitesimally decrease the pressure until it becomes what about two? But during this reaction, the system is doing work against external pressure. So to maintain the temperature of the gas, the heat should be come into the system from surrounding. So that's why I Q here. 
So by calculating the entropy change of this isothermal reversible reaction, we can calculate the entropy change of this free expansion. Okay? Question? No? Okay. Then how can we evaluate the entropy change during free expansion? Here is our solution. As you know, the internal energy given by this first law of thermodynamic Q is heat absorbed by the system and W is work done by the system. Right? So when we consider the change in internal energy, it will be given by this one. The reason, I, the reason why I use here Greek character delta is that Q and W is not the state function. That is why I use Greek character delta instead of D here. During the reversible process, the heat absorbed by the system is given by this one. Ah, right, this one. Heat absorbed by the system is T D S. Right? This relation only hold for reversible process. Can you understand? When you convert this DQ to TDS, it means it, that process is a reversible process. If the process is not reversible, you cannot replace the D delta Q with TDS. Okay? Question? The heat Q is the heat absorbed by the system. So this is this Q, not whole heat appeared in the system. So when you replace the delta Q with TDS, it should be reversible reaction. OK? And work done by the system is PDV. And we did almost all. Here, T, DS. Last one is that the kind of tedious calculation, but T, T, U, T, T, V. Right? So we want to calculate the entropy change from state one to state two for free expansion. P state one is P T and state two is P one T 
P2, T, because the temperature is the same during the free expansion. So we integrate And there is no temperature change, so from here, this is P of R because PV is RT for the ideal gas. So this is 2 P over R, T, V, V, and this is R, flow V1, V2. Free expansion is an irreversible reaction. So it, it occurs spontaneously. <coughs> because in terms of the system, the entropy change is not dependent on whether it goes reversible way or irreversible way. So that is one of the way to calculate the entropy change in reverse irreversible reaction. Okay? And here is another interesting expansion, which is called adiabatic reversible expansion. Adiabatic means, what is adiabatic means? Sorry? No heat is going on. Yeah, no heat transfer between system and surrounding. So, <clears throat> As I note in this figure, there is no heat supply. If there is no heat supply to the gas, in reversible reaction, in what I mean, the reversible reaction, the volume of the gas when the pressure decreases to one of two it cannot reach its isothermal reaction counterpart. Why it cannot reach its volume which corresponds to the isothermal reversible expansion? Because For doing work, for doing work against external pressure, the temperature of the system should be decreased. Right? For example, for adiabatic expansion, du equal zero, which means Q equals W. So that's why the volume is, ex the, the extended volume is not as much as its isosomer reversible, uh, that of isosomer reversible expansion. So homework two is to evaluate the final volume of the gas when it goes adiabatic reversible expansion in this case. It needs some, some more 
uh, study on the textbook of thermodynamics. Usually, typical textbook of thermodynamics, most of them handles this uh, this case, and it it will be not dif that difficult to follow the formulation. But I would like I want for you to uh, follow the procedure at once. Okay. Question? No? Okay. So we have handled the change of entropy will be positive when the process occurs in spontaneous way, which means the ir irreversible way. Then why we use another measure called free energy? to estimate the irreversibility of the reaction. You already know that usually we use free energy, the change of free energy, to determine whether it goes or not. It is in equilibrium or not equilibrium. Why we use free energy instead of entropy? The thing is that when you consider the entropy, you have to consider the entropy change of the system and the entropy change of the surrounding. Sometimes we want to know how the system will go with information of the system. So to determine the irreversibility of the reaction, the information of the system, we use the concept of the free energy. But that concept is not the new one. Then how we determine whether the system goes in spontaneous way or not. When we handle the entropy change of the surrounding, the entropy change of the surrounding is the heat leaves the surrounds and enters into the system. In the condition of constant temperature and pressure, what is the heat absorbed by the system? Heat means heat leaves the surrounding and absorbed in the system. What is definition of that heat in constant pressure? Constant pressure. What is the definition? Heat leaves surrounding and enter into the system. That is entropy. Right? So here H is the heat leaves the surrounding and enter into the system. And here T product S is heat appeared in the system. So roughly speaking, in constant pressure and temperature, the free energy change is the heat absorbed by the system 
and heat appeared in the system. So in reversible reaction, as I mentioned, the heat absorbed by the system is equivalent to heat appeared in the system. So free energy change is zero because H is equivalent to Ts. If the system goes in irreversible way, the heat absorbed by the system is always smaller than the heat appeared in the system. That's why in spontaneous reaction, the free energy change is always negative. That is the concept of the free energy. Why the free energy is the measure of irreversibility. <coughs> In mathematical way, we just follow the concept what I said to you. So, when we define the free energy is S and consider the state change from 1 to 1 to 2 and then the free energy change is E2 is G1 H2 minus T S2 minus H1 plus T S1, right? And this is H2 minus H1 minus T S2 minus S1. And this is, here is E and U the same. E2 plus P V2 minus E1 plus P V1 minus T here S2 minus S1. This E2 minus E1 is Q minus W, right? And P V2 minus V1 minus T plus. And the work done by the system, work to bind the system is the same, so Finally, we obtain Q minus T delta S. Here, Q is heat absorbed by the system, and T delta S is heat appeared in the system. So, we can use the free energy as a measure of irre irreversibility of the reaction. Okay. <coughs> Usually we evaluate, you can evaluate the free energy of the pure metal by measuring the heat capacity. So as I mentioned, when we define the enthalpy of the pure substance is zero at 298 Kelvin. This will be some enthalpy change of some arbitrary pure element. And by considering the contribution from the entropy, we can draw the free energy curve of pure element 
as a function of temperature. It, it, it will have a shape like this one. OK? Then let's think about the liquid state of the same element. To transform the solid to liquid, what is ne necessary? To transform the solid into liquid, what will what is what is necessary? Sorry? Latent heat, right. We have to put heat into the solid. So it is natural to guess the enthalpy of the liquid will some little bit above to the enthalpy of the solid as the amount of the latent heat at the each temperature. So it is some somewhat above the enthalpy curve of the solid. How about the contribution from the entropy? It is obvious that the number of configuration in liquid state is much larger than that of solid, right? So the slope of this free energy curve will be steeper than that slope of the free energy curve of solid because of larger contribution of the entropy to the free energy. Right? So there will be some cross point between the free energy curve of solid and liquid. This point will be the melting point melting point of that pure substance. Okay? This is the free energy concept in pure pure element. The free energy concept of pure element is very straightforward. There is no difficulty in understanding the which phase will be stable or which phase will be not be stable. Let's move to somewhat complicated problem. The phase is single, but there is two atoms, which means I mean solid solution. The phase itself is a single phase, but there is two atoms inside of the solid solution. Then what will be the free energy of that system? From now, it is quite deep, uh, complicated into when we consider the, the effect of temperature or pressure, then I would like to fix the temperature and the pressure in all discussion. So, Please remember that what I told you is the, under the condition on, of constant pressure and temperature. <clears throat> so let's consider about one more or mixture of a and B. The mixture itself is one more. Atom A and B. And each more fraction is given by XA and XB. Before mixing, before mix two atom, 
the free energy of the system of one mole of two cluster of atom is given by this one, linear combination, right? It is natural. Then when we mix the atom in the box, then what would happen? Unfortunately, the free energy itself is not the same before mix because there is a change in enthalpy and there is a change in entropy before and after the mixing process. What makes the change in entropy? Yeah, interaction between atom. Usually, the bonding. There will be a different kind of bonding, and different kind of bonding will be created. Before mixing, there is only bond between AA and BB atom. But when we mix the solid solution, there is another kind of bond, AB, up here. Those kind of new bond affect the entropy of the system. How about entropy? <coughs> Sorry? Right. Before mixing, when we consider the solid, there is only one way of the configuration. But when we mix, there are many ways of mixed configuration. So the number of configuration increase. So it contribute to the change of the entropy. So when you consider the difference of free energy before and after mixing, we call it the free energy change of the mixing. This is graphical presentation of the free energy of mixing. Here, this is molar free energy diagram, the free energy of the one mole of the system. Here, point GA is molar free energy of A atom in, for example, its own crystal structure. And here, GB is free energy of V atom. Before mixing, that the free energy of cluster of two atom will be on any point of this linear line. <coughs> and as I, men but as I mentioned to you, there is a free energy change due to the mixing process. So the free energy of the solid solution of atom A and B, actually it follows this lead curve. Because of the deviation caused by the free energy of mixing. Then the problem is how can we handle the free energy change, entropy of mixing and entropy, entropy of mixing. That is our problem, how we can handle. To handle this problem, people thought, have thought two hypothetical solution. One is idea solution. 
Second is regular solution. Of course, the real solid solution is deviate, not, not perfectly described by either ideal solution or regular solution, but that is the, one of the way to handle the frame of mixing. And this kind of formulation give very important tools to, 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 for the calculation of the free energy curve and also calculation of the pace type. For ideal solution, we assume that the entropy of mixing is zero. But entropy of mixing is given by the configuration of random mixing. And second, in regular solution, we, will, we consider both entropy of mixing and entropy of mixing. Entropy, uh, entropy of mixing. Entropy of mixing is given by the same as the ideal solution, which is given by the random mixing, configuration of random mixing. But the entropy change, entropy of mixing is considered by the broken bond model. We calculate the bonding energy between AA, BB, and AB, and then calculate the entropy change before and after the mixing process. At first, I would like to talk about how we evaluate the entropy change in random mixing. <coughs> The entropy change in mixing process is entropy after mixing and before mixing. Before mixing, there is only one way of configuration, so we do not need to consider about it. When there is, if we consider one more of atom, and there is Na more of A and Mb more of B, then the configuration after mixing process is given by this formulation. This is because let's consider uh, A atom. Number of A atom is total number of A atom is N, and number of A atom is N, number of B atom is N minus N. Let's consider how many ways we put the atom at lattice site. <coughs> at first, we pick up and there is, for example, there is some numbers in atom. So, when we put the A atom number one in the lattice, how many way? How many way? There is N way, right? And how about the second, number two, then is n minus one. And number three, n minus three, n minus two. At this moment, we just consider the, this three atom. This number come from because we put the name on each atom, right? But actually, for example, we put one here, two here, and three here. But there is no such kind of numbers in 
on a tom. So one, two, three, three, one, two, three, one, two, three is all the same. Right? So we have to divide. by Korea. When we consider this three atom. So when we expand this concept to an atom, then it will be This might be the same. And this is the same expression with this one. Okay? Then, from the classical thermodynamic theory, the entropy change is given by k rho omega, and this is k rho hello, this, this, Na vectorial, Mb vectorial, and Na plus Mb. Vectorial. <coughs> and this will be K rho Na and B Victoria as K logo Na Victoria as K logo and B Victoria. And if we use some approximation of the rho n factorial is n log n minus n. This is the Stirling's approximation. So then we can write n a n b log n a plus n b minus k n a log n a minus k log n b Right? Is it correct? <coughs> is it correct? So this is Avogadro number, and this is Avogadro number. So This is K and A log N A minus K. This is more fraction dot Avogadro number and log X A and A minus K X B and A log X B. So finally, this when we put this one in a logo, and this one is
Oh, something wrong. <laughs> All right. This and this is canceled out. Because XA and XB, when we add XA and XB is equal 1, because it's more fraction. So finally, we have K and A will something wrong. Okay, I will drive this in this <laughs> next quest. <laughs> something wrong. <laughs>